Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's uh, continue the discussion with the design now. So we have looked at different kind of propeller and how they look like, their nomenclature. Now we will go down to slightly different aspect of it like how aerodynamically these are designed. So let us uh, look at the um, aerodynamic uh, design and that is done through different theory. So let us start with the actuator axial momentum theory or so we will start with axial momentum or this is called actuator disc theory. Okay. So, we will start with that. So, actual car disc is also sometimes denoted as this actuator disc also called the uh, ranking fraud or slipstream theory. So, these are different naming which are given. So, uh, the, uh, this theory on 18 based on 1865. So, the actuator this theory replaces the propeller with the infinitely thin plane or actuator disc. So, let us see how it can be done. Let us uh, draw some configuration here. So, let us say this is the actuator disc sitting there, then the flow could be like this. Uh, could be like this, then this goes like this. So, let us say this is the actuator disc sitting there. Now, this is 1. So, that is 2. This is the disc. This is T 3. So, this is a stream tube. So, that is 4. And if we plot this, so now this could be V, then this is V one plus A, V one plus B. Uh, this is velocity, then we can see the similarly pressure, this is P A, this is P 2, this is P A, so this is P 3. So, and if we plot that in a slightly three dimensional way, then it looks like here is the disc sitting there and so this is what V 1, P 1, let us say this is area A 1, this is 2, 3, so P 2, P 3, A 2, B 2, B 4, P 4, area 4, 4. So, that is a thin disc kind of now, which imparts a certain momentum to the fluid passing through it when there is this actuated disc. 
Now, this theory provides an initial idea regarding the performance of the propeller and also its efficiency, but it uh, cannot provide you the detailed design related aspect. So, there are certain assumptions in this particular approach. Uh, one is the fluid is one dimensional, incompressible, compressible, then uh, perfect isentropic. Second, flow has uniform properties across the that is velocity and pressure across any plane normal to the flow except for the discontinuous jump in pressure across the disk itself. So, uniform property that is another third is the rotation neglected that means, the rotation important to the flow is also neglected. Fourth, the streamlines all the edge of the disc define the outer limit of the contracting stream tube, which passes through the disc and separate it from the surroundings. Okay. So, that means, the stream tube provides the boundary. So, and the stream tubes also have cylindrical section in both for stream and for downstream. And then fifth is the flow outside the propeller stream tube has constant stagnation pressure, no work is. So, outside um, uh, propeller stream tube has constant stagnation pressure. So, this uh, particular diagram provides you some pressure velocity diagram. So, one is first stream here, first stream from the propeller, two is just in front of the propeller. So, let us say two is here, then three is here which is just after the propeller 4 is again further downstream of the propeller. So, the distance between 2 and 3 is infinitesimal because the disc is thin and this is what is assumed to be. Now, also the stream tube along the stream tube sections 1 and 4 the velocity increases from the free stream value of V 1 at cross section area a 1 to the area A 4 and B 4. So, the static pressure at station 1 and 4 could be P 1 and P 4. So, which are atmospheric that means, P 1, P 4 it would be P atmospheric, but the pressure difference across the disk is built up and so, what we can write. So, velocity at disk we can write V 2 equals to V 3. So, which is written as V 2 equals to V 1 1 plus A, where A V 1 is V 2 minus V 1 is the increase in velocity through the disk, where A is called the axial inflow factor. Okay. So, now if we have fully developed slip stream, the velocity V 4 is V 1 into 1 plus B, where B V 1 equals to V 4 minus V 1. 
So, that is the increase in velocity there and B is called the slip stream factor. So, what we can get that A is B 2 minus B 1 by V 1, B is B 4 minus V 1 by B 1. So, we can estimate the thrust, so we can apply Newton's motion and there is a region control region between 1 and 4, the thrust could be m dot v 4 minus v 1. Now, let us say if we drop the subscript on the free stream velocity v is v 1, then we can write this one is m dot v into 1 plus b minus v which is m dot b v. Now, here m dot is the mass flow rate or mass flow through the actuator disc, through the actuator disc. And also we can write that m dot equals to rho a v 2 which is rho a v 1 plus a. Now, when I plug this back together, so this will give me rho a v 2 v 4 minus v 1 rho a v square 1 plus a into b. Now, force balance across the disc require that it would be a into delta p. So, this is from that figure that we have drawn and where delta p would be p 3 minus p 2. Now, if we eliminate t, we get delta p equals to rho v square 1 plus a into b. Now, we have assumed the flow is incompressible. So, the Bernoulli's equation applied between now we apply Bernoulli's equation between 1 and 2, we write P a plus half rho v square P 2 plus half rho v square into 1 plus a square. Now, similarly we apply the Bernoulli's equation between 2 and uh, 3 and 4 that gives me P 3 plus half rho V square equals to P A half rho V square 1 plus B square. So, what we get that P 3 minus P 2 equals to delta P equals to half rho V square 1 plus B square minus half rho V square which will rho V square B 1 plus B by 2. So, that is what you get as delta P. Now, if we eliminate delta P from this equation and this equation we get 1 plus a equals to 1 plus b by 2. So, that means a equals to b by 2 or b equals to 2 a. So, so, one can prove that B 2 would be B 1 plus B 4 by 2. Now, if you have no forward velocity or rather 0 forward velocity, so B V 1 equals to 0, then 
v4 equals to 2 v2 when the forward velocity is 0. So, this looks quite simple, but uh, important result means that any speed including 0, one of the final increase in velocity in the slip stream has already occurred at the rotor itself. So, now going back to the that thrust expression where we have written T which is rho a v square 1 plus a 2 a which is rho a v square 1 plus b by 2 b. Now, this equation is an quadratic equation. So, if we solve after solving what we get a equals to minus half plus minus half square plus t by 2 rho a v square. Now, let us say small v if we say this is induced velocity, induced velocity at the propeller disc and can be written at A into V, then what we get that small v equals to A V minus V by 2 plus minus 2 square plus t by 2 rho a. Also, we get b equals to minus 1 plus minus 1 plus 2 t rho a v square. Now, again we denote w equals to b b and this one is the induced velocity for downstream the propeller disc. So, this is B v minus B plus uh, plus 2 t by rho v. So, we get all this uh, details that uh, we wanted to calculate. So, now we can look at some other uh, factors like, uh, like propulsion efficiency or propulsive efficiency. So, that is eta p and that is uh, defined as p a by p which is T v by p and where p a is the thrust power or useful thrust power which is T v. This is the or sometimes called the available power and this is the p is the power delivered. So, this is a ratio, ratio between available power to the power delivered is the propuls, uh, propulsive efficiency. Now, for the actuator disc model the this efficiency is an ideal propulsive efficiency because it ignores all losses except the associated uh, stream wise kinetic energy. So, what we have the useful power is T v which is rho a v cube 1 plus a into 2 a. Now, the power expended on the air which is also p which is also rate of change of kinetic energy. Okay. 
so that becomes half m dot b square 1 plus b square minus v square which is rho a b cube 1 plus a whole square 2 a. So, this ratio of these two powers uh, for the ideal actuated disk model is called the ideal fraud efficiency that is eta f that is ideal fraud efficiency and this is 1 by 1 plus a which is ratio between v plus so this proves that higher efficiency of propulsion can be achieved by large rotor with very small increase in the fluid velocity so achieving thrust by large surfaces rather than velocity. So, ideal fluid efficiency eta f is always greater than actual propulsive uh, efficiency. So, that is what it is always like that. Now, we will go to another uh, theory which is called the simple vortex model. So, so this is a sort of an modified actuator disk. Now, a practical assessment of the propeller performance and the design. So, we can consider a stream tube that passes through a radius r and which is shown here. So, there is a propeller disc and there is a stream tube the corresponding angular speed at this blade is let us say angular speed that is omega r. So, this is the angular speed of the propeller r is the local radius of the propeller when fluid passes through this propeller through the propeller section it acquires an angular speed due to the swelling because this is uh, called so called simple vortex model so then the rotational speed at the propeller section would be u which is a omega omega r where a omega is the angular induced factor ok. So, the local flow velocity just downstream of the propeller can be estimated which is like let us say v r which is equals to v 2 square by u square which will be v 1 square 1 plus a square plus a omega omega r square square root of that. So, the local flow velocity for downstream, so the local flow velocity for downstream of the uh, propeller can be found propeller can be found as v r prime. So, which is root over of v pro square plus u square. So, we can write that down as v 1 square 1 plus b square 
plus e omega omega square. Now, that is what you get. So, this is where the v r and u and v 2. Now, the let us say the at radius r the local propulsive efficiency the local propulsive efficiency based on modified momentum theory this is the so this is uh, called the modified momentum theory or this is what exactly the simple simple vortex theory so sometimes it's called the modified momentum theory or simple vortex theory so based on that the eta mm we can define as T V 1 by T into V 1 plus kinetic energy of the losses. So, which we can write that M dot V 4 minus V 1 into V 1 M dot V 4 minus V 1 into V 1 plus half M dot V square V 1 square plus U square. Okay. So, this one can be further simplified and one can write this could be V V 1 square. So, you can do this uh, math b v 1 square plus b square b 1 square plus u square by 2. So, what we can write is 1 by 1 plus b by 2 plus uh, u square by 2 b v 1 square, okay. which one can write 1 by 1 plus a plus u square by 4 a v 1 square. So, finally, this one if we replace it back then we can write that let us uh, write it here that eta m m equals to 1 by 1 plus a plus e omega square omega square r square by 4 a b 1 square. So, this is what one can get with the modified momentum theory or simple vortex model. So, you can see that either one can do the analysis with uh, uh, like an actuated this theory this is one of the simplest way one can do the design uh, simple vortex model or modified momentum theory to get this uh, efficiency and other stuff so there are uh, two different way you can look at it these are the again the simple theories which are used to calculate the uh, actuated disk uh, uh, analysis but uh, these are again assuming that this to be thin 
and uh, then carrying out this analysis. But one can always look at these blades and the detail analysis either put it in the wind channel or somewhere by doing testing or uh, sometimes uh, doing the computational approach where you can calculate all this numerically and look at the flow field around it. So, we will stop this uh, theoretical discussion here then continue some of the part in the next class.